welcome, my name is John Dickinson for Rhizom Lab, and in this tutorial we're going to look at various techniques for focusing on objects and also for marking seams. So first of all, let's load a model, choosing Load from the Files menu, and in the files you downloaded inside the Models folder, choose Forward Controls. So in the last tutorial, we looked at unwrapping single objects, but most of the time when you're working in Rhizom UV, you're going to be unwrapping a model with more than one part, such as this forward control for a motorbike. And when you have more than one object, you need to know techniques for isolating objects to make it easier to work on. And to do that, we use these tools here, Isolate, Hide, Show, and there's also an auto function. Let's take a look at the auto function first, but I want to start by just coming over to this button here. This is the full screen 3D button, and the hotkey is E. All right. And now let's come over and check Auto. So when we do that, nothing actually happens. But if we click on an object, making sure we're in Edge Mode, that isolates that object. Now, to unhide everything, we just click away. And that deselects the object, and now we can see all of the objects. Let's try that with a few other objects. You can see this is a pretty quick way to isolate objects that you're working on. Let's turn that off. And now let's look at the isolate option. Now the best way to work with these tools here is to use shortcuts. So to isolate, move your cursor over the object and hit I. Move your cursor away from the object and hit I again to unhide all of the objects. So that's isolate. To hide an object, we do the same thing. Move our cursor over the object and hit H. We can move it over another object and hit H as well. And maybe one more. And let's assume that these objects are the group that we're working on. If we want to isolate something in this group, we move the cursor over it and hit I. And notice when I move my cursor away from the object and hit I again, it only reveals those objects that were in that initial group. If we want to show all objects, we hit Y. Okay, so now that you understand how to isolate and show objects, let's use those tools and take a look at the different techniques for selecting seams. Now we're going to use this long arm here, so let's move our cursor over it and hit I. All right, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. The most common way to select seams is by double clicking a loop. So I'm just going to double click this loop here. And notice how the selection stops at this three sided edge. So this is a pole. And if we have a look at the other side, you can see it's also stopped at that pole there. So to add more loops, I hold down the shift key and double click. And just a reminder if you haven't watched the previous tutorial, just to check your own shortcuts based on your mouse configuration. I'm going to keep moving around and holding down shift and double clicking. So this is a really nice quick way to select loops, especially if you have a nice clean model with good edge flow. Okay, there we go. And you may remember if you've watched a previous tutorial, you can select single edges. I'm going to select those three there and these three here. And then you can select the loops by from the select menu choosing select loops. Obviously the keyboard shortcut is much faster. That's Alt X. Now we can control how loops are selected by using max angle and max count. Let's enable max angle first. I'm going to leave the default angle at 180 and go ahead and select that same loop. And this gives us the same result as max angle being disabled. But what if we decrease this to say 25? And double click again. Ah, so now you can see that we didn't get that full selection. The selection has stopped at this point. And that's because the angle between the last selected edge and this next selected edge is larger than 25 degrees. 
and notice how if I double click again, there's a force stop at the pole, and there's also the stop that's caused by enabling a max angle of 25. Let's take that back up to 180 and just disable it and take a look at max count. Now, with a max count of 10, if we double click the same loop, this is going to select 10 edges either side of the edge that we double clicked. It's a little easier to see if we drop that max count right down to say 2. Now, if we double click, this is going to select a total of 5 edges. So the initial edge that we double clicked plus 2 edges either side. Let's take that back up to 10 and disable. And now take a look at these options, geometric and stop. We'll start with stop. And let's double click this same loop. And hold down the modifier key and add this loop and this loop. Now notice how when we select this loop, it stops at the poles as you'd expect. Let's just undo that and enable stop. And once again, hold down the modifier key, double click. Ah, now you can see with stop enabled, the selection stops when it hits the other selected edge. And this may or may not seem useful on a model like this, but it does come in really handy with larger, more detailed models where you're more likely to want to control your selections. So let's disable stop and enable geometric. Now, geometric tries to find straight edges, and it actually works pretty well with this model because it ignores the poles. So if we double click a loop, notice how it's ignored that pole and it's gone straight around. So it can save us a few clicks. Let's also add this one. And there you go, that's pretty much done. Okay, so unhide everything by hitting the Y key and now let's focus on this knurling. And this is a more complex object because it has lots of poles. So if we double click here with geometry off, we're only going to select in between the two poles. Let's turn that back on and turn stop off and double click. So now we select that loop all the way across so it makes really short work of this more complex object with lots of poles. Just going to hit I to isolate and that's pretty good at that side. It's gone all the way through. How does it look on the other side? That's looking good. If we wanted to change the direction of that, we could just hold down the control key and click to deselect an edge. Or you can hold down control and drag out a marquee and select more than one edge. If you hold down control and double click, you'll deselect the entire loop. I'm just going to carry this all the way through here. Like that, just to redirect it. So you can see the geometric option is really handy. But where it comes in particularly useful is with really complex triangulated meshes. So let's open up the geometric.fpx file. We're not going to save this one. This is nothing like the previous model. It's much more complicated and it's all triangulated and it has zero edge flow. So let's just disable geometric and just double click on an edge. At each side is a pole, so that's where the selection stops. If we enable geometric, double click again, then it does select a loop, but obviously in this case, that's not a very useful selection. So there is a little bit of trial and error finding the loops that are going to work. Something like that is much better. And if we add stop, You can see how that can be useful as well. So this is a far more effective way to select chunks of models like this to unwrap. And while it can be a little hit and miss, it definitely saves time selecting individual edges. But if you did want to have a little more control, if we come into the select menu, notice how this option here, select shortest path, is checked. And that's because this is the default option. So with that in mind, if we hold down the modifier key, mine is shift and control, select an edge, and then while moving the cursor along the edges, you can see we get this white preview. Of course, it's a little slower than double-clicking, but you can decide where you want to put that loop. 
And once you've chosen the path to select the seam, just with the modifier key still held down, click the left mouse button. And let's just add one more. And as you can see, that definitely gives you more control. So now let's take a look at this other option. Select Edge Loop. To do that, we'll reopen the forward controls file. Okay, so from the select menu, let's choose Select Edge Loop. And once again, we'll just isolate this arm. So now with that option selected, if I hold down Shift and Control, you can see how it actually shows me the edge loop. And we still have geometric and stop selected. And again, with the modifier keys held down, just clicking the left mouse button, we'll select that loop. And you may prefer to have this option as your default. Personally, I find just double clicking an edge automatically selects that edge loop anyway. So for me, I prefer it at select shortest path. All right, so that's edge selection. Now let's take a look at polygon selection. So we'll come over and select polygon mode. And I want to choose a different object. So I'm going to hit Y just to show everything. And I want to choose this object here. So hitting I will isolate that object. To select a polygon, we can click on it. To select multiple polygons, we can click and drag out a marquee. Notice up here in the select panel that there's different marquee options. Rectangle is the default. There's also a couple of lasso options and a circular option. And we can add to that selection by holding down the modifier key. In my case, that's shift. All right. Another good way to select polygons is to double click on an edge. Notice how by double clicking on this edge here, I select this loop. If I double click on this edge here, it selects that loop. So where you double click is important. Loop selection works really well with the numpad shortcuts plus and minus. You can use plus to grow the selection and you can use minus to shrink the selection. If you don't have a numpad, you can also use the select panel. Once you have your selection, to convert it to edges, we have to switch to edge mode. And you'll notice how the selection disappears. So come over to the select panel and choose create edge selection from selected polygons. The other way, if we just come back to polygon mode, is simply to press C and that will cut those edges. And if we just click away to deselect, we can see those orange cuts. Okay, I'm just going to undo that and just deselect. Now, probably the most efficient way to select in polygon mode is using the magic wand. And it has two modes, coplanar and curved. Let's take a look at coplanar first. And coplanar is for selecting areas of coplanar or flat polygons. Notice how we're getting a white preview of what's gonna be selected. And you can see it works really well with this object. Let's just deselect that and hit Y. And Let's just choose this object here, hit I. And notice when I hover over that object, we can use coplanar to select curved faces as well. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And to control how many polygons are selected, we can use the max overall angle. So if I decrease this to say 10, notice how that's only gonna select one row of polygons. And that's because the angle between this row of polygons and this row and this row is greater than 10 degrees. Notice also on the right, there's a little I button and this is the magic wand gizmo. So let's click to enable that and move over the object again. And we get this blue line above the cursor. So this is a visual indication of the angle. Let's make this really extreme. Let's make this 180, which is the max. And notice how our gizmo is now a complete circle. And if we click on the object, you'll notice how it selects the entire object, which isn't so useful. So for selecting curved shapes like this, curved is a better option. So let's deselect coplanar and turn on curved. And with the default settings, if we hover over the object again, you'll notice how it selects the entire object, which is the same as if we had coplanar at 180. 
The big difference with curved though is that curved evaluates selections based on the normal values that are included in the imported FBX. But in this case, the entire object is being selected because I've exported this FBX with no normal information. And if that's the case, there is an option called Use Geo Normals, which will recalculate the normals. So let's just turn that on. And now when we hover over, you can see that we're not going to select the entire object. And this is much more useful. And it's even easier to understand what's going to be selected if we also activate local angle visualization. And now you can see these purple lines. Very nice. Let's just unhide the rest of the objects. And now you can see those purple lines across all of the objects. Now to control where the normal breaks are, you can see these edges here being selected is not going to be very useful. We can use the max local angle. And as we increase that value, you can see edges become deselected. And I'm a Blender user, so for me this is very much like selecting sharp edges in Blender and using the sharpness value as a threshold to determine which edges are selected. And you can see, just with a few clicks, I've made my selections. So this is a really efficient way to work. Now, the Magic Wand panel also has a couple of options. Smooth out selection for noisy shapes and fill gaps. And these are best demonstrated by using the geometric file. So let's open that up again. And we'll just change some of these settings. Let's turn off curved and turn on coplanar. And keep in mind, you can use both of these at the same time. We'll drop our max overall angle to about 40. And let's try and make a selection. So with noisy shapes like this, it can be really tricky to get clean selections. And that's what these options are designed to remedy. So let's change smooth out selection to one, see if that helps. Ah, it's already helping a lot. Notice though that there are a few holes in it and that's what fill gaps is for. So let's bring that up to say 60. This is based on polygon count. And just move our cursor. There we go. Right there, we get a full selection. There's a few missing here, but once again, we can just hold down the shift key and just add to the selection. So you can see how Magic Wand really makes short work of this. And these extra options just really help. Okay, so by now you should be pretty comfortable isolating objects in Ryzen UV and also using edge mode and polygon mode to make selections quick and easy. So join me in the next tutorial where we'll look at tools and techniques for cutting, welding, unfolding and optimizing.